Today, we're going to start working on another MacBook. Here, we have an A1706 13-inch Touch Bar MacBook Pro. Let's see what's wrong with this MacBook. We're going to take the bottom cover off of it. And the first thing we're going to do is unplug the battery. After we unplug the battery, we're going to see how many amps it takes using a USB-C charger. This MacBook appears to be taking 5.18 volts, meaning it's not negotiating with the charger. And it's also taking zero amps. It seems like most of the screws are missing from this MacBook already. Lame. I don't like MacBooks that are missing all their screws. Poor MacBook. Who took your screws from you? Good trackball. Love my trackball. Is anybody out there gearing up for the holiday? I was gearing up to be a good consumer. I bought myself a new lens for the overhead camera. Had great reviews. Everybody said, way better than the piece of crap kit lens that comes with the camera. And then I viewed side by side. You could not tell a damn difference in an ABX test as to which lens was which. The Sony kit lens looked completely identical to the Sigma 30mm prime lens that I got. There's genuinely no difference. In detail, close up, far away, same thing. Maybe I'm just blind and have no taste. That's always possible that I have no taste. It's probably a big part of it. But, so I returned the lenses. I was trying to be a good consumer and spend all my money on Christmas on things that the B&H catalog t said would make me happy. But the B&H catalog's things didn't make me happy. Where does happiness come from, Paul? Happiness can come from a B&H catalog. Definitely. Let's see if after unplugging everything from this MacBook, if it's able to turn on. We've plugged the MacBook charger in, and it's still stuck at 5 volts, meaning it's the USB-C chip is not negotiating with the USB-C charger. Let's take a look and see if PP3V3 underscore G3 hot is present. Oh look, a solder blob. Let's take a look at this PP3V3 underscore G3 hot circuit and see what they did to it. Oh dear God. Oh my. Wow. Much Paul. What? What? No, you said you don't do that anymore. We said what? You said you don't give me the ridiculously stupid things anymore. Holy crap. That's a, is that a trace? No wonder they were so f***ing salty and douchey over email. Every effing time that somebody is a douchebag in email, it's because they did some shit like this and it failed. Uh. This is why taking do-it-yourself repairs that failed is always a bad idea. Because they're always going to be really salty that the stuff didn't work and they're going to take that salt out on you. It's kind of like when you has, hear about these situations where a man has erectile dysfunction right before sex and he can't perform. And he starts to take it out on the woman and he gets really angry and really mean. It's kind of similar to what happens with certain do-it-yourself customers that fail at the repair when they bring it in. They will start taking it out on you. They will yell. They will berate you. They will be aggravated at every part of the transaction. And I wish it wasn't the case because I kind of like teaching and showing people the stuff, but it, it unfortunately is the case more often than not, and it really sours the experience for both parties. Let's take a look at the schematic and board view. Steve, you want to see why that person was such a douchebag in the emails? Yeah. Take a look. Uh -huh. Oh, man. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. That explains it. His attitude and personality matches the quality of his board repair. The first thing that we need is for the charger's 5 volts to go show up at R6902. Let's see if we're even getting that. So on R6902 over here, right next to the diode, I am to be expecting 5 volts. Let's see if that's there. So when I plug you in and I measure over here, looks like we're getting 5 volts at the, and the input of the diode. Now let's look on the other side of the diode over here and see if that voltage is making its way through to the input of U6903. It is. 5 volts. Okay, next up. It, this is hysterical because the email said something like, you know, I want you to send this back to us before more damage or harm is done to it. It's like, fucker, you raped the board. You raped this. Look at this. That's rape. It's sodomy. Absolute sodomy. That's all you. And if you're watching, you know who you are, mofo. You know who you are. You know who you are, and you know what you did. First thing to do, are these res is this stuff on the side actually soldered properly? Are we even getting PP3V3 underscore G3 hot? We're getting nothing. 
We get zero volts on PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. Absolute nothing. So now we're going to unplug the charger and check for resistance to ground. I wonder if there's a short circuit. There is no short circuit. Next up, we're going to check this. Are these, res is this style, is this soldered right? Is this supposed to be there in that way? Yeah, we sent this person an estimate and they said, it's clear that you don't have any interest in working on this. Send it back before you harm it anymore. It's like, we sent you an estimate. You never replied to it. And then we open it, and this is what it looks like. Like, wow. You have nerve. You've got balls. Serious balls. Yeah. This is totally, and this is going to be a big one star. Just like, there's no need to be so much of a dick right out the gate. But this is why. This is why you should decline do-it-yourself failed repairs. Because they're always super salty. Always super salty. Like a normal person would just say, oh, sorry, I didn't get the email. Yeah, go ahead. A douchebag will write a one-page letter about how they're going to send you a, uh, a certified mail with their letterhead demanding it back because blah, blah, blah. It's like, let's see how these work when they're actually soldered there. Joke. It's like sitting above it. Cap has been soldered. Now let's just check the rest of this. I mean, I'm not going to trust the rest of this crap, but... All right, so this pad over here looks a little no bueno. Hmm. This may not be attaching to anything. There may not be voltage going into it. As can be seen here, pin 2 on the chip is going to be the input voltage that allows it to work. That's where voltage is going to be coming in from either the charger or the battery on pin 2. And that is the pin that seems to be kind of missing a little bit. It's like that, that pad is a little bit corroded and it's just kind of half there. So what I'm guessing is that we're probably getting some kind of bad connection between here and here. So the chip is not getting the input voltage it needs to turn on and function. So I would run a wire from here to there, just in case it's not able to support. I have to run a jumper here to out input, but input is right next to output on the right and feedback on the left and feedback over here. So I have to run this there, but without it touching that, that, or that. That is some shit. It's not gonna blob over, it's just my, I need my wire to not get stripped. What if I just run my wire up? No, I can't do that, that's, that's, that's ghetto. But then again, this being so close to this is ghetto. Okay, that, that, that I'm sure is fine. We have about two microns of clearance. That's more clearance than Apple gives the data line from the 40 volt backlight on the LCD connector anyway. I'm sure it'll be just fine. All right. I mean, really, look at this. Let's get a zoom in take. Am, am I just being cranky? Because maybe I'm just being cranky. Perhaps I'm just being cranky. Like, we, if we zoom in... This is output of the chip. This is input of the chip. This is feedback from output. This is a probe point of feedback from output. And this is input. Isn't the MacBook to flux ratio a little bit off? I agree.
Now we're taking zero. We're taking six, 60 to 90 milliamps, but we're still stuck at 5 volts. But this is progress, because before we were taking nothing. And now we're at 19 volts in 800 milliamps. So this may actually be working now. All we had to do was undo the messed up stuff around the PP3V42 circuit and set, allow input to actually get to the chip. Input was not making its way to the chip. It was clearly a pad that was missing. Not missing, but just in bad shape. And now it's a main power pin, so that's important. So we reattach that. And as you can see, that's as good as fan spin right there. 19 volts, 400 milliamps. I mean, do we really even have to plug this into a screen to see if it works? I don't think we do. Turn on, mofo. Chuck, we'll see about that. I hope so. Look, an Apple logo. There's an Apple logo. It was not communicating with the charger. We could tell it was not communicating with the charger because we were getting 5 volts instead of 20 volts on the USB-C amp meter. The first rail that has to be present in order for this to work is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. When we looked around the, U the PP underscore, PP3V3 underscore G3 hot area, it looked like somebody had just taken an axe to it. We removed the work that we saw, and we noticed that the input, which is right next to output as well as being next to feedback, great, great, nah, I don't know why, but anyway, this was this pad looked like it had seen better days, and that's also the main input. If it was anything other than main input voltage for the circuit, I'd say fine, but it, it, it's main input, so that needed to a jumper wire. We, we ran a little jumper wire. It didn't cause a store fire, and uh, with that, it works. As always, I hope you learned something. And from there, on to the next MacBook.